Morning everyone, welcome back to the channel and this morning, seeing as everyone is out at school and at work, I'm going to do something which I've been meaning to do for a good few months and that is do some testing on the Vectrex uh, gaming system that I got, it was at the end of the summer sometime and it's been sat in a box on the shelf. So. I don't know a lot about the Vectrix. It was was around like in my youth, but um, I'm going to get it out of the box, plug it in, and hopefully it will work, and I can have some some fun while people are out. So uh, let's go and get it. So there she is, sat on the shelf. This normally happens with sort of odds and ends that I like. I've got sort of Amigas and Spectrums and Commodore sixty four sat on these shelves. So it is a bit of a it's a keeper for now kind of thing, um, but I haven't even turned it on. So I'm going to take it downstairs, make myself comfortable and plug it in. OK, here's what we've got in the box. These rather arcadey looking um, controllers. This a spring back to the centre. That's fantastic. Look at these buttons. These are proper old school buttons. That one's a bit stiff. All those seem all right. I might have to give that one a bit of a clean. We'll check that one out. Here's the actual unit. I thought it'd be really heavy, but it's not actually that bad. Um, it's about the weight of a cheap Matsui stereo boombox sort of thing. Um, got three packets of silica gel from the 1980s, which is nice to see. And the games, there's actually like an Asteroids type game built into it. Um, and it's black and white. And you put these kind of things over it to make it look a bit more kind of like space age. So I'll check that out. Or we'll hopefully check it out if it works. And then there's a Pac-Man type game called Clean Sweep. And how much did this cost originally? 23 quid. Our price. You got them in our price. So yeah, it was MB Games that made it. Um, let's have a look at the box. Always good to have a look at the box. Serial number, what does it say? It's the unique built-in screen, no TV set needed. The only video system that brings the real arcade. I mean, it does look like a real, kind of like, I can imagine if you got this, you'd think, oh God, I've got my actually my own arcade machine in my house. Um, like I say, I don't, I've kind of got like very vague memories of this because at, at this sort of time, I think I would have been into, this is pre kind of Spectrum and that, all those computers, I think. We're talking around about sort of 82, 83. Um, and I think I would have had an Atari and the, the, Atari, the Atari, we got our Atari after we had like a Colour Vision Pong sort of game which we would have got in the 70s, and then we got the Atari, and the Atari was like, well, this is the business, because you can just, like, have all the arcade games you want, like the Pac-Man, Space Invaders, all of that sort of thing. It seemed like you were sorted. So, um, yeah, I and and the good thing about the Atari, and the, one of the big things was that you could use your own telly. You know, it was like, well, I don't need to bother with that and, and buying that, because... Um, I've already got a, a great big telly sitting in the corner, so I'll just, you know, plug this uh, console in. So um, I don't know how many of these sold, really, but um, it's cer certainly interesting looking at it back, in, you know, for sort of like 40 years later to see what was out there. And they are quite sought after as well. Anyway, let's get it plugged in and see what it does. Right, I've just plugged in one of the controllers. They go in this sort of unit here at the bottom. And I was going to turn it on, but I cannot see... Oh, there we go. Off and on on the right and volume. It's just like an old telly. And you've got a reset button in there. On the That button on the left is a reset button. So um, here goes nothing then. I'm a little bit scared. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, my God. I am in Star Wars. I am in Star Trek. So I haven't put my little plastic sheet on. So that goes on there. Look at that. Oh my god, that is actually like the Star Wars arcade game, isn't it? Oh, 
So what am I doing? Okay, this controller, perhaps I haven't plugged it in right, but at least the system turns on. So that's good. I'm going to um, turn it off and see if I can get this controller working. Well, you think the one on the left would be player one, but it was um, play two, and I had that plugged in, and player one was empty. I plugged them both in now. So um, here goes nothing. Let's, uh... I mean, I'm literally very nervous about turning this on and, and filming it for the channel because, um, one, it might blow up, and then if things don't work, you feel like a bit of a nana, but... Um, Let's see if this works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, at least look at that. Look, it's worth it just for that, isn't it? It's fantastic. Right, let's see what we can do. Oh, there we go. Hyperspace. Th thrust. Get a bit more sound on it. There's a fire button. Oh. Incredible. It's a bit buzzy. I mean, that could just be um, the volume controller. It probably does need some capacitors changing after, you know... 40 years but that is amazing Let's see if I can get some more um... the key to uh, asteroids on the uh, Atari was do not move from the middle do not hit the thrust button I'm not doing too badly doing it one handed I mean, that is amazing. I'm going to die now. It's just... I love that start. That is incredible. Sorry it's a little bit out of focus. Very difficult to sort of film it. Hyperspace. Ooh, we're going on an adventure. Oh, it does tend to stop. The one on the Atari, you sort of just drifted on and on. Is impossible. Not bad at all, not bad at all. I mean, you're playing this in 1982 and you literally are in space. That is fantastic. Right, I am going to have a look at Pac Man now, or Clean Sweep as it's known. Let's have a look at that. So here we go. What is in the box? quite a small cartridge and I'm wondering whether it's got a little plastic sheet yes it has so we've got that little bit of plastic that holds I don't think that holds anything you could have a, an array a, a, an array of condiments in there you could have like you know from McDonald's barbecue sauce and uh, tomato sauce so we've got the instructions Pretty plain. Oh, it's just up, down, left, right. And we have the green, what do they call it? The green uh, shield. <laughs> so let's stick that on. Oh, the cartridge, I think, just goes in the side, in there, unless that's just the handle. No, it looks like it just goes in there. So I'll hopefully get it the right way, plug it in, and see what Pac-Man's like. Feels like I've got a whole new machine here. Oh, right, it hasn't recognised that. Took a couple of goes to get it going. Um, I was probably being a little bit cautious with pushing in the uh, controller. Let's see if I can get a clean sweep. Oh my God. 
looks like a fish in the middle. Where are my power pills? Everybody needs a power pill. I've got a bad feeling about this. They look horrendous, those ghost type things. Oh. The sound is, uh, and the actual feel of it is amazing. Little, you can go in this little box. I don't quite. Oh, that is a power pill. You just got to go in the box. Come on. I mean, it's enough to drive you insane. The noises, isn't it? Going for a clean screen. No, oh, no! Oh, I, I thought that was it there. I thought all my lives are gone. Let's go for my. Uh... No! I didn't do that. Come on, up, up. There we go. <laughs> a huge sense of achievement. Let's turn it down. That's got a volume control there. End. If I can find it. It's, um... The actual display, I was just reading it on the internet this morning, and it's not like your normal cathode ray tube television. Um, it's a type of cathode ray tube, but like the type you get in oscilloscopes, you know, those things that measure voltage and current and give you wave patterns, and you see, see them in hospitals and sort of thing. Um, so it's that sort of technology, really, um, but quite incredible that they could do... Uh, really good arcade games out of it. Um, it has got on the box, just to show you, all the games that were available. Um, let's turn that off. Let's get rid of the background buzz. So I think there were around about 15 or 16 games. Um, probably all... Let's have a look. Let's get some light on this. So we've got Blitz... Berserk, which looks like some sort of maze type thing. Under attack. A lot of these would be Space Invader clones. That's Clean Sweep. Starhawk, which looks like a sort of shoot 'em up, but uh, quite a weird perspective. Starship is probably a bit like Starhawk. The Space Wars is probably a bit like S Starhawk. Cosmic Chasm. After Chase, that looks quite good. That looks like a racing game. I mean, I'd love to try some of these games because, I mean, it just looks so space age. It kind of reminds me of Tron, which is around that sort of same era. That looks like Defender Scramble. What's that? Rip off? Rip off? No idea what that is. I cannot read that. What does that say? I cannot eat, and my eyesight is going. Head. Heads up. Football. A football game. Not exactly FIFA. Spike, help, help. That looks quite fun. It looks like a cartoony thing. Web warp. I mean, some of these do look amazing. Flip out, pinball. 
Narzoid. No idea what that is. And Bedlam, which looks like some crazy games. So that you know, though, those were the games. Um, I, you know, I think it is very limited to. How many are there? Three times six, 18 games. Perhaps it's limited to those 18 games. Well, I've got two of them. Well, maybe it's um, you know, the Asteroids plus the 18. Who knows? Now, do I collect them all? I don't know. I'm very, very tempted. More to come. Well, maybe not. Hope you enjoyed that. I always sort of like love turning on these old vintage systems and pray they're going to work. And I mean, I could play that for hours, but... I think I'm gonna might have another 15 minutes on it and then uh, pack it away and put it on the shelf. They are worth um, quite a lot of money, um, but that for me is a keeper for now. Like I say, I don't particularly want to have the hassle of packing that and worrying about it. Um, certain things I will keep, like um, game and watches, I do love to keep because. Sort of that, this sort of 82, 83, 84 era is really sort of my my era for this sort of thing. Um, Nintendo, Sega, I can take with a pinch of salt, really. But this sort of stuff, sort of Atari, Spectrum, uh, Game & Watch, anything around that sort of 82, 83, 84 is my bag. If you did like the video, do click the thumbs up and uh, do subscribe if you want to see sort of more of this sort of content and uh, click the notification bell. You'll be notified of all videos that come through. I like to sort of keep them to 10 minutes. Love showing you my retro stuff uh, and all my hauls that I get for reselling. And also on Mondays, I do like an, an hour of listing live uh, just to sort of try and get working and get busy. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take it easy.